Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about color theory and about some of the issues that come up when trying to translate some traditional approaches to color theory to digital painting. So um, I've been doing more practice with the Munsell color system. Um, you can read into this yourself, I'll put some links in the description, but the Munsell system is uh, a system of d discussing color that was created by a guy named uh, Albert Munsell in the early part of the 20th century. And one of the things that it has is that it's based on a nine-step value scale, which you can see I have a version of it open in Photoshop, with one as black, nine as white, five as middle gray, or 50% gray, and a series of, e of even steps in between. So um, three is halfway between one and five, seven is halfway between five and nine, eight is halfway between seven and nine, etc. So um, one of the values of, uh, no pun intended, using this system is that if you want to do a still life or a portrait or some other painting from real life, you can start with a value composition in just black and white, and then you can choose colors which match the value uh, that you established in your overall, in your preliminary value study. And as other people have said, and you can look into this later, 90% of good composition is in value. It's just light and dark. You can take any given painting and turn it into grayscale, and it'll still look pretty good. Um, whatever the forms there were will look good, and even if you had something like um, Oh, I don't know, like a Monet, um, you could uh, turn it into gray and it would still have a lot of its original appeal. Monet is probably not as great an example as there could be, but with almost all painting, you can take away color and if the value is good, the painting will be good. Um, and when it comes to doing grayscale, doing it on a computer is really easy. You know, you've got, um, you can you can convert your images to just work in grayscale. It helps keep your file sizes small. Um, in a program like Photoshop, it's very simple. You can you can just block in gray values and go from there. Um, some people even like to do a full painting in just gray and then create a a layer with a color blend mode on top of it, which isn't a fantastic idea for a variety of other reasons, but. Working with gray, no big deal. It all makes sense. You have a, um, for example, if you have a grayscale, if your image is in grayscale and you have your color panel in Photoshop open, it'll tell you what percentage of black it is. Now, the only, th the only thing that to complain about in this is that Munsell's nine-step scale goes from one as darkest to nine being white whereas the K scale, which is, tells you how much black it is, goes from zero at white to 100 as black. But, you know, if you can wrap your brain around that, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. Medium gray looks like medium gray, no matter how you slice it. All of this goes out the window when color gets involved. I'm going to turn this document back to RGB so we can talk about it. Munsell based his color theory based on colors having three attributes. One of them is value, how light or dark it is compared to white and black. One of them is hue, which is what the identity of the color is, like red, orange, yellow, green, purple, etc. And then the last one is called chroma. Chroma is difficult to talk about no matter what, but it's especially difficult on a computer. But one thing that I want to talk about when you're dealing with digital painting in a program like Photoshop is that once you start bringing color into your value composition, the brightness slider over here in your color sliders is going to give you all kinds of wrong information. You would think, you know, if it's just black, it's really easy. Look at brightness. It looks just like value. You've got, it starts out zero, and then it gradually gets more and more and more and more until it gets to be white. It makes perfect sense. There's white. It's a, it goes from zero to 100. It makes perfect sense. 
But the second that there gets to be a color, like say we want to have mm, yellow. Let's say we want a nice sort of golden yellow. And let's say we wanted an intense yellow. All right, so I'm going to paint with that intense yellow color I picked out on the canvas. This says the saturation is 100%, and it says the brightness is 100%. Sure, it's really bright. Bright yellow, there it is. Here's the problem. First of all, is this yellow as bright as white? Uh, well, it's pretty bright, but I don't think it's as bright as white. I mean, white's the brightest thing there is, and this yellow is even as bright as it is. It's obviously visibly slightly darker than white. So why is this 100% bright and so is white? Hmm. All right. Well, here's the next question. Now let's say I want a nice blue. Okay. I've picked out the blue I like. I want it to be as deep a blue as it can be, so I'm turning the saturation all the way up, and I have my brightness all the way up, and then I'm going to put the blue down here. Now wait a second. Brightness is 100%. Not only is this blue obviously significantly darker than white, it is significantly darker than the yellow. And the two, the only thing that's different according to hue, saturation, and brightness is the hue. They're both 100% saturation and they're both 100% brightness, but that makes absolutely no sense. Brightness has nothing to do with lightness. Brightness has to do with how hard the phosphors of the monitor are glowing. And that's because when you're working digitally, you're working with, a, instead of working with a canvas which is illuminated by lights, you're, look, you're working with a panel which glows at you with colored light, with little red, green, and blue phosphors. And those phosphors can either be very, very bright or dim, or very, very dim. And depending on the brightness or dimness of each color phosphor, it, they combine to create color from a very, very far back scale. That's fine, but it just really isn't helpful when you're talking about painting because you want to be able to discuss the lightness and darkness of objects, of forms, based on how light is bouncing off them in the real world. Okay, so brightness is just not helpful. Um, if I wanted to have a blue that was very, very, very light, like almost white, in order to get that, I have to turn the saturation down. The brightness is still at 100, but I have to turn the saturation way down and fade this out to kind of a pastel blue. And when you're working with hue, value, and chroma, I don't think you should have to do that. I think it's kind of a bummer to have to remember to both turn the brightness all the way up, but then turn the saturation all the way down. It just isn't compatible with that mode of thinking. So. There's one thing that Photoshop includes that does make life a little bit easier, and that's lab or LAB color mode. LAB um, is very useful for color correcting photos. The um, it's I won't get into it at all, but it's three aspects to each color, and one of them is L, which is lightness. And luckily, L is based on this Munsell system. Actually, Munsell had um, a major influence on the development of lab color. So if you open up your info panel, which I'm sure you never ever use in Photoshop when you're painting because there's very little to know about what you're doing that would live in here, but if you open up your info panel and you've got LAB values on one side and HSB values on the other side, you'll see immediately what's going on. So I've got my eyedropper. Actually, you don't even need need the eyedropper really, um, but here you can see everything's fine. L lightness is zero, brightness is zero. We're going to move up. Lightness is 12. Brightness is 12. 25, 41. Da, 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 da. They're 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 maybe different by one or two percentage points, but otherwise they're exactly the same. You can see light L and B are tracking together equally. However, the second that we introduce color, once again we find a discrepancy. All right. L. It's um, it's 93, so that's obviously s darker than white, even though you can take a look at B. B is at 100. L is changing. And now watch what happens when we go between yellow and blue. Brightness is 100, but look, it went from 93 to 32. 
32 is very dark. And finally, we've got this pastel blue. And you can see it's back up to 92. It's very, very bright. But according to HSB, this and this are the same brightness. So brightness out the window. So what do we do? It is not exactly simple in Photoshop. Um, because it's true that sometimes in order to get a particular color at a particular value, it is going to have to wash out. You are going to have to decrease your saturation. It's, that doesn't bother me so much, but what does bother me is the fact that there's no quick way of constraining the lightness of a color and picking the hue. If you have lab sliders in your color panel, it's great. Like you can pick, you know, I want something that's going to be 50% gray or 50% or 5 on the Munsell scale, but A and B are really not fun ways of picking color. It makes sense when you're doing color correction, but they're not fun. You can use this tiny little color ramp, but it's really too small to see. You can also use the color picker here. You can start with L and get L where you want it. Like I know I want a green and I know it's going to be about 50% lightness. And then once you've got L locked in, you can um, you got, you know, you, you know it's green. You're going to pick the green you want. You're going to pick the L you want, and then you're going to pick the saturation as high as it can possibly go with this particular value. And there's always going to be a limit to how saturated this can be at this lightness and this hue. And that's also a discussion of the of color space, and it's not something I'm going to get into in detail right now. Photoshop does not make this easy in any way. It, it's really depressing. There should be a good way to be able to pick a hue, pick an L, and then pick an S. Now, Photoshop doesn't do this, but da -da -da -da, Paint Tool Sci does. Paint Tool Sci is my new hero. It's great. It does a lot of stuff that Photoshop doesn't do well. It costs about $60 US. It's fantastic. It, it, it's very fast, it doesn't lag. There's a lot of stuff going on in Paint Tool side that's great. I highly recommend that everyone who uses Windows get it, and if you have a Mac, then run Windows in Parallels and get Paint Tool side because it's great. So, Paint Tool Sci, in addition to having a persistent color picker, um, supports a variety of different modes of color picking. It lets you have hue, saturation, and brightness, which it calls value, which is a bit confusing because that's exactly not what we just said was value, but it also supports lightness. So that means that if you know that you're going to have a lightness of a particular value, granted here it's between 0 and 255, but it's not that hard to do the math. Um, if you know that it's, that it's going to be about you know, this, this degree of darkness, you can check on your grayscale first. You can check on the Munsell scale in another layer. You know that this is going to be this particular value. You know that it's going to be this particular hue. And this is as saturated as it's going to get. And in Munsell, in Munsell terms, this is as high as the chroma will go for this hue at this value. And then you can turn it down for lower chroma. But this is what you want. You should be able to do this in Photoshop. Whoever writes Photoshop, put this in Photoshop. For now, I will use Paint Tool Side because if you're actually painting, and it makes sense because this is a painting tool, you're going to want to have access to this information. And as you go down the value scale, what you're able to achieve changes. And that's a fact of the Munsell color cylinder or the space, the color space that the Munsell system describes. At a very, very high, at, at white, doesn't matter what you do because no, none of these colors is going to be, is going to exist. It's just white light, white all around. But as you get slightly darker, the saturation that you're able to achieve reaches a certain peak at a, a particular value for each different hue. 
and then declines. Again, it's, it's really difficult to summarize this in a satisfying way, but for every hue in this color ring, some, such, some, some lightness value will put that hue at the highest possible chroma it can have. And it varies from color to color. For the cyan, it's about... Um, it's about me medium medium value. For yellow, it's it's a slightly higher value. For red, it's a slightly darker value. So the the most intense and brilliant expressions of each hue is achieved at a different value for each hue and you don't need to get into that, but the important thing is that for everyday use if I'm doing a painting here and I know that I've got a color that has a Munsell value of 3 and I know that it's got a hue of the some such hue and a chroma of, I don't know, low Paint Tool Sci gives me everything I need Photoshop does not. So if anyone watching this cares um, write a plugin for Photoshop that will let you do this properly. There's somebody on conceptart.org who made a script that makes Munsell swatches for Photoshop and that's helpful but it doesn't really give you the proper control that you want when you're going from a value study to adding color but maintaining those values in an accurate way based on lightness not based on brightness. So, in conclusion, brightness is stupid. Lightness is great. Photoshop, get your act together. Thanks for watching.